all right guys welcome back new video excellent so picking up from the last video i had to make a new waveguide because we're going to install a waveguide higher up in the hopes that it will um fix a lot of the problems of the previous location of the waveguide so you see here i am cutting out this sheet metal 16 gauge sheet metal measuring it all that fancy stuff, snazzy, snazzy, snazzy. Um, and you see here I'm welding it. I actually like 16 gauge sheet metal because it is pretty weldable, you know. It doesn't really blow through easy. And if you do have a small gap, you usually can fill it in with MIG or... I'm using Flux Core here at 110 amps. I actually really like Flux Core at 110 amps because it is, uh, it's just as controllable as MIG is, at least to me. And um, I don't need to use gas for it. Though it does bring spatter, which is messy and looks ugly. So you see I'm grinding a lot of that spatter off, making her look nice and pretty. She gotta look pretty. You know, she's a pretty gal. So next, I had to drill these holes in it uh, in order for it to mount the uh, old waveguide on there. Not the old waveguide, but one of the, the waveguide systems, uh, the one where the magnetron will be. You see, I made this like a modular system so I could flip it around, change it around, whatever. So we drill those holes. You know what we do. Now we've got to mount it on the actual reactor, slash weld it, because that's the only way we can get this thing airtight on there, unfortunately. So I have to uh, measure where I'm going to cut, and I have to, you know, i got to cut this baby again. And I, I have been cutting and drilling so many holes in, in her. I know she's sick of me, um, but, you know, some sometimes we got to do these things, and if I don't do it, who will, right? So cut that hole in there. I will say it was definitely a task to cut it. There were, little, there were um, these little cut marks because, you know, a grinding wheel is only so small and I didn't use a little die grinder. So, you know, it's imperfect, but welds can cover up almost any imperfection. <laughs> you know what they say. So I hit it in and I started to weld it in there. And that welding took a long time to do, primarily because my machine was giving me all the problems in the world on Noah's Ark when I'm trying to weld this thing, right? It doesn't want to give me these problems any time before, but it wants to give me the problems when I'm welding one of the most essential things. Because if there's any leaks in these welds, any porosity or any holes, you know, it's going to leak. So that was annoying, but we got that done. There might still be a couple small leaks, but, we'll, you know, we'll seal them up over time when we see them. But it's on there now. And, um, I, I have a video here showing you the agitator because I did change up the agitator. I actually added a little handle on the bottom instead of that wheel, that pulley wheel with the, the motor. I completely removed the motor system because it spins the things way too quick. I doubt it has enough horsepower, but even if it did, we don't need that much agitation. It's just kind of a waste of energy. Right now, I would just stick to using my hand. Of course, long term. I want to use the motor or an, a different motor, but right now we need to take baby steps first. You know, I need to stop trying to jump up the elevator. Let me just get off my knees from crawling, right? So, yeah, that's pretty much what we did here. So, let's get to how it works. All right, so she's been running for about five minutes now. And something I do notice is a it's a lot slower, right? Like, five minutes in the previous position of the waveguide or when it was at the top or the side down here this thing would be like you know completely pressurized you know it's producing that much gas but now you see it's kind of slow um now actually i think that that's a good thing okay and i believe that's the case because it it means that the heating is more even you know it's not just concentrating on one spot it's kind of hitting all the plastics and that's because with the positioning of this the microwaves are going to come from here they're going to shoot hit this side of the wall right they're going to hit this wall bounce off the wall then just start bouncing around the place and absorbing into the plastics compared to like right here they come out and hit plastics right away so when the microwaves start bouncing around the place they affect more of the total plastic rather than just a specific spot so that means less hot spots, which does make the reaction overall a little bit slower, only in the beginning, but in the end, it, it actually probably will end up catching up in theory. Now, I wanted to show you, I ended up sealing this, uh, this old microwave waveguide port, just a piece of metal, two screws, 
and uh, RTV silicone. That's all it takes to make a, a pretty good airtight seal um, that won't degrade over time. Well, you know, of course it will since it's silicone, but it'll be a good second. So you can see now it's starting to pick up in the production here, but still this is more like, it's not, it, it looks like what's going on here is this is quite low temperature pyrolysis happening. The gas isn't as defined. Now this, like I said, is a good thing because a theory of mine is a reason why I never had a, a good amount of oil production is because um, the, the gas was getting way too hot, right? Because the temperature was a hot spot on a certain amount of plastic at a certain time and that was just causing the heating to get too extreme. It would vaporize it to a point where there was not much oil to condense. But with this, perhaps it may work better. I also was testing the stirring. Um, you see when I stir it, when I agitate it, it starts to produce gas. More gas, which is a good sign too. So really I'm just going to let this thing run for like however long it takes and we're going to see where it goes. Um, I'm still, you know, experimenting, so I'll keep this port open for a little bit until we can, you know, see what it's doing, and then we'll we'll see if we can route it through this whole gas system here. All right, it's been running for about an hour. As you see, I, I have a little flame coming off of it. So it is producing gas. When I go to stir the agitator, actually, it picks up immensely. Let me show you. All right, it's kind of hard to see on camera. But when every time, with every rotation, the amount of gas produced, it like multiplies by a lot. Now that's actually a good thing because that shows that, you know, the material is mixing right and some of the gas pockets, I guess, are being broken up. But you see, once you stop stirring, it kind of ev evens out because this is new material that needs to be broken down so there's really no gas coming out the top there. If I start stirring again, see the gas starts coming out. You see it's, it can get quite a bit pretty quickly with that. So the agitator works well. I had this oil pan down here to catch, catch the oil which makes the seal. Um, but I will say that so far, this waveguide being on the side, the magnetron on the side, it's not as... It just doesn't seem to work as well as it did from the top. Like, you know, when it was down here, it worked better. But still not that good. When it's up here, it seems to work even worse. The best position seems to have been the top. Now, let's remember. One of the main reasons I moved it to the side is because when I had it coming from the top, it would, you know, completely degrade the plastics up here leaving the plastics down here because the microwaves couldn't penetrate that deep. But maybe that issue can be solved with this agitator, which we clearly see, you know, will give us a good, a good mix of the plastic. Really, all this would depend on how this carbonizes in the end. So I'll let this run for another like two hours. And if we get complete carbonization of all the material in there, meaning it's like pretty much a powder, then it'll be good, right? But if not, which is kind of looking like it won't just by how this gas is so low temperature. All right, so it's been a couple hours. Let's see how she looks inside. gasket fell off okay well not good uh yeah you can see that very very um minimal carbonization here let me get my my trusty screwdriver so you can kind of see the texture of this stuff It's definitely not, I mean, look, there's some on the edges. Some of it has been absolutely carbonized, but first of all, it's really, really moist in here. Like, I guess it's because of the oil, right? But 
think there was a lot of water content in some of this stuff because it's very, very moist. And you can see, like, there are whole paper towels intact, whole bits of plastic just together. So, overall, very poor performance. Um, and, you know, we kind of got a gauge on that by just how, uh, you know, weak the gas was. Um, it took a long time, and for how many hours I've been running this thing, there's really no excuse. You know, with all the previous other positions of the, the, the magnetron when it was on top, um, even when it wouldn't reach the bottom of the material, the top would be completely carbonized by this time. You know, I ran this thing for like three or four hours. You know, this is absolutely unacceptable. So, I'll admit, I was definitely being impulsive. When I went ahead and um, I sealed this old wave guy poured up here. See, I kind of wetted that back on there. I did want to mention, before I go, that uh, the, the microwaves, they're a great idea in practice or in thought. But they're really frustrating to work with for many reasons. The first reason is they're, they're just so unpredictable. You know, like, we can only, we can only say, okay, we're going to put... Uh, a waveguide here, we're going to put a waveguide here, and the microwaves are going to come out. But we don't know what those microwaves are doing. You know, we just can assume. And then temperature, you know, even if I put a temperature probe in the reactor, you don't, you would never know the temperature of the material being affected by the microwaves. You can only assume. There's just so many guessing, there's so much guessing done, and there's also a huge lack of research. Um, because microwaves, you know, they're a relatively new technology, you know, um, and not only are they relatively new, but it's there, you know, because they're just so hard to predict and understand and all that, there's not that, like, you can barely find microwave reactors anywhere else on YouTube except for right here, right? <laughs> um, so like everything I'm doing here is kind of based on everything that I observe and I see. And I don't have any, you know, special tools or anything to know all this. So with that being said, though this is an idea I definitely want to continue to pursue, I do also want to uh, explore other forms of electrically heated uh, pyrolysis reactors, like maybe uh, a reactor that uses several diff uh, heating elements around it, you know, like coil elements going around the whole thing, this insulation, you know, and, and see how that works. Of course, it will never be as efficient as how microwaves work because, you know, you don't have to worry about heating an outside container. You're heating right what you need with microwaves. But I think it'll be worth the try just because I don't know how long it'll take me to get this microwave reactor to a point where it's, you know, um, completely functional. You know, that could take years <laughs> just because uh, it's there's so much to learn with it. You know, learning every single time I'm doing something new. Um, but I'm glad that I'm documenting it. I'm glad you guys are along for the journey. Um, there's been a lot of new people coming onto the channel. I've been responding to as many comments as I can. <laughs> Thank you all for watching so much. Please leave any suggestions or questions or anything in the comments of this video. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you so much.